It sounds like I'm overcomplicating it, but I'll put it into position and you'll see exactly how, what we can do and what we can't do. So these taps, we might have to round them exactly where they've got to go. We've just got the angle growing and took about 40 mil off that. That is pretty flush. We're now moving on to what is probably the most pain in the ass unit to try and work out. Again, annoying little bit that you've got to sort out. Got the tap in. These are the things you need to overcome. So the Velux windows. Still. You know when you look at something, you've been doing something all day, it's just devoured hours and hours of your day. I posted a picture of it on Instagram and a few people were like, I wouldn't go anywhere near that, I wouldn't want to scratch it, damage it, anything like that. So it is like a, what is it, like an Egyptian mummy, packed away inside there. So I'll show you what this bath looks like in its position, where it's going to be. There we go, I mean it is absolutely stunning. Right, welcome back to the channel. We are back at the bar conversion. As I said before, we're gonna be here for a while, but today we're doing um, a little bit of proper plumbing, as I call it. Uh, yes, the underfloor eating has been proper plumbing, and it's over there, the lads are putting the boards down, as you'd have seen in the other video. But today, we're now shifting over to getting all the pipe work in and first fixing slash second fixing of these bathrooms. So, we've got hot and colds coming up here. So we've got to put them where the basin's going to go. Toilet's going there, so that's not an issue. Um, then on the waste, we've got to come up, put a dirt on the top of there, air admittance valve on the top of there. But what I really wanted to show you was, <laughs> here we are having um, a two meter by 800 handmade copper and nickel freestanding bath. It is literally, it's over there. I'll show you in a minute because it is a piece of art, it is mega. Um, I think it's about six and a half grams worth of bath. But what we've got to do is set our exactly where it's got to go because we're having these taps at the back of it. I think at the back, Scott may shift them down to the side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some measurements now, get find out exactly where we're going to be with the bath and then offer the taps into position so we can work out exactly what we've got to do because on the bottom of these taps, let me just show you. They're held in, I do if you can see it, they're held in my two little grub screws and these taps just slide off the top. But at the on the bottom, just got to be dead careful with these. On the bottom is a threaded fitting. So I assume off here we're gonna have to have a it looks like 28 mil to be fair, 28 mil, 22 mil swivel connector to come off there and put two bits of copper just straight down drill the holes exactly where they've got to go, and then we've got to slide the tap into position, but this has all got to be done. The holes have got to be drilled first, then Terry's gonna come and tile the floor, but leave the holes out, so then we can then slide the whole tap onto it, if you know what I mean. Let me just put it into position to give you a little bit of an idea of what I mean. So, these are the taps. And what they're gonna have to do is sit roughly around, I think they're gonna sit roughly around here. Watch them fall over there. No, real good. So that's rough, well, roughly where they're gonna go. But what it is, the pipes are coming off the bottom, so we're gonna have to fit that all in one go and then fit the bath into position after it's been tiled. So we've got a markup, get the holes through. I'm gonna make sure we've got where they're going. Then we can put this bath into position. Yeah, that's it. One, two, three, two, three, 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 three
three. Uh, mate, that's a couple of mil, eight, and fucking. Uh, it's that's what I say, don't they? They'll put the taps in central anyway, won't you? Yeah. Well, do you, do, you want, do you want a middle or end? Or? I just want to be middle. Right. So we've offered this bath into position, put the taps to the back of it. Scotty, whose who's, uh, barn it is, has just sort of said to me, right, that's exactly where we want it. So I'll show you what this bath looks like in its position, where it's going to be. So. There we go. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. I say, I think it's six, six and a half grand hand, handmade copper bath with nickel inside. So it's copper on the outside, nickel on the inside, two meters long, 800 wide. So the taps are into position. What we've got to do now is mark out on the floor exactly where they're going to go, and then also mark through there inside where the waste is so we can mark the waste move this bath out get it back over there packed away so it's not going to get damaged and then i'll show you exactly how we're going to sort getting the pipe work through for the taps we've marked out all around the outside of it as well exactly where it's going to go mark the waste mark the tap so now we can get the pipe work in or at least get it ready for the pipe work to go in because as i've said these taps are going to have to go in after the floor's been tiled and lift this out this way. Yeah. Oh, that's just lift it over that way. Right, so that's the bath out of the way now. So these taps, we've marked round them exactly where they've got to go. In fact, I'm just going to go all the way round. So we know exactly we're in line. And then the back one is just to stay. So the back one will just be bolted down to keep those. If you've ever fitted these, you know they're pretty top heavy and they flex around a little bit. That back, that back leg will be bolted down. So that'll be bang on. So what we'll do now, we'll move that out of the way. <coughs> right, so make sure it don't fall over. So there, the two points that we've got to go through. So we're going to drill two holes through there that size in fact i think we might even go bigger yeah what i'm going to do i'm going to drill that that big through because then when terry tiles it he will be able to cut quite a smaller hole when the floor is tiled so we get the holes drilled through then when the floor is tiled that tap will go on and the same with the waste this point here is exactly where the waste is in the bath so we know our trap's going to sit like that and into the waste pipe below that's why we've cut out the bottom of the floor just because the depth of the trap would have pushed against that so just gaining us that sort of 20 mil there means the the uh means the bath trap can go in there a treat so we'll get these drilled out So there we go, that's the holes drilled into position. So what we'll have to do now is put the two little tails on there. Once the top floor is tiled first, put the two little tails on the bottom of there and then all that will slide in, in one, then bolt down into position and then connect into the pipe work underneath. So we know where we're at with the taps for the bath. We're now moving on to what is probably the most pain in the ass unit to try and work out. So I'll try and explain this the best I can. Got high level pillar taps going in. So looking at the front of it, this is all they want to see on show. So inside here, what I'm going to do is go from, because they're high level pillar taps, for some reason, they're 22 mil, um, three quarter fittings on the bottom. So I'm going to come off here, drop down to 15 mil in the reducer, then a 15 mil isolator valve. Then what we're going to do is come out the bottom 
just a tiny little bit on a chrome elbow and dug back into the wall. So it's going to sit there, taps there, down, chrome elbow, directly into the wall. Then, this is the annoying bit now, is this bowl's sitting on, but as you can see the actual waist is proper long, so then that waist trap is going to sit roughly there. So what we're going to have to do is trim that waist down to bring that within that unit and then just cut a tiny little hole in the bottom of it for the end of that trap to sit through. All that's got to go in, in sort of one motion and then connect it underneath onto those two little bits that we're going to bring out there. So we're going to get the legs on it now, offer it into position and just try and work out exactly where that part where it's going to go. So we've got the legs put on it now, uh, we're going to offer that into position now and just see if we can get that it all to sort of tie in. It sounds, it sounds like I'm over complicating it but I'll put it into position and you'll see exactly how what we can do and what we can't do. It, we've literally been scratching our head for like half an hour now trying to just work out how it can all go in because it's all got to go in in one and because they don't want to see too much pipe work on it I'll just show you, it'll be a bit easier. So that's a little bit of a better way of explaining it. So we've got the high level tap, then the basin, something like chrome. We've got it like that nickel chrome silver effect because it's going to work with that bath that I told you about. But this is, so imagine it all being boarded and tiled. That's what we've got to play with. So the waste trap is going to sit in here. By the time it's on the bottom, level wise it's going to be about there so we're going to see if we can cut that waist down the actual waist fitting for the basin and then the waist trap can sit there and then we can then mark on that back edge where the waist pipe has got to come through because we've got the chrome chrome pipe that's going to go through but again that's all got to fit in in one and then for the taps put a fitting on the bottom of the tap drill a hole through there and then underneath it's just going to poke through sort of here and then a chrome elbow, chrome pipe into the back of here and then we can connect it into the hot and colds there. So it's just a bit of a pain to, to try and get it, ball eight, yeah, it is Sean, it's a bit of a ball eight to try and get it all in, in one, but I'm sure we'll get there somehow. So this is the thing, when you're doing sort of bespoke bathrooms, it's about taking your time, working out exactly where things have got to go. If it's just a normal basin with a vanity unit, bang it in, pipes in the back, bring it out, connect it up, done. But with this, you've just got to take those, you know, if it takes an hour longer, a couple of hours longer to work it out so it looks neat at the very end, that's what A, the customer wants, B, they're paying for. And just for your own personal, you know, you want to be able to put your name to something that looks proper smart, which this is going to look proper smart when we sussed out exactly how it's going to go in. I think what we're going to have to do, we've just been to the merchants to see if they can do a short of one of those waste, but they don't, haven't got one or they can't get one. So what we're going to do is offer that up, and um, what's that, 40 mil. So we'll measure from the bottom of here, 40 mil down, and see if we can cut that waste flush. Um, just so that when we do connect the trap back onto it, it will seal. Um, we've got a couple of these spare, so we're going to cut it off, see if we can get it to dead flush so that the washer will sit on it. It's the only way around it. Trial and error. So we'll give it a go. If it doesn't work, we'll, we'll explore other avenues with it. But I've done it before. I've cut waste down before. And as long as you get it dead flat, which I'll show you how to do now, then it will work half all right. So I've marked just on here, that little line there is where we've got to cut it. So we've got to lose that bit off it just to be able to hopefully get that trap on. So what we'll do is spin the nut on. This is a spare nut anyway, or we've got another nut that we can put on if this is gonna get damaged by how we're gonna do it. So that mark there is just there. So if we just put that nut exactly where it is, now we know we can just cut straight down there and hopefully it should be flat enough then 
take the edge off it, file it down a little bit and it should be flat enough then to, for the washer to seal when we put the trap on. So there we go, I've just got the angle grinder and took about 40mm off that and if you screw that back that is pretty flush. Um, so I think that's perfectly flush to be fair. So I think we should be okay with that. So we'll offer it in position now, get the trap on, mark it up and see where we're at. So that's the waist cut down. So now the trap's got to go in. But as you can see, even if we put the trap real tight to the top, it's still going to overlay the bottom there. Whereas now it's sitting down about 40 mil. So what we're going to have to do is cut a hole directly underneath here where that's going to sit, but we need to get it bang on so that just, just the end of that just slips through the hole there and so that we can get to the bottom if need be at a later date. So we'll mark that up through the top, to be fair. We'll whip the bowl off, put the bowl over there. We'll just find the centre of this, drill a hole there, see what that size is there and just sink it in so that that waste will sit perfectly inside it. Right, there we go, the hole is in the bottom of the unit now, so all I've got to do is, let me just lift this out of the way, pop it on there, put this in like so, pop back and then that will screw So, we're just sort of doing a hand tight now, we're just offering it into position because this, to be fair, this unit is the one that's going downstairs. So exactly the same unit, but because we've got it here, we can set this and then when, I think the other one's a slightly different colour, when the unit comes from upstairs, we know that it's going to work, so we can just offer it into position and cut it and get it in. But it's perfect just to try out exactly how we think we're going to do it. So, and we'll just spin the tap round. We can just tweak that. But you see what I mean? So now that waist is in effect where it's going to go. We can push this into its position, mark on there where the pipe's going to poke through the chrome pipe. And then once it's in, just cut it to the right depth and it'll be straightforward enough to install. Plus we'll put that into position and we can mark underneath exactly where we're going to mark for the pipe work to come through. Tony held on with two tiny little screws. Right, so that is where it's going to go. So now, as I just said, we can mark through there where the pipe's going to go. And what I'm going to do, I think, is two swivels on the bottom a couple of swivels on the bottom put the reducers in or to be fair I'll see if I can get uh, 22 to 15 reducers actually just to save us a bit of space and then directly out of there so we'll put a fit in on there directly out of there I may even to be fair We've got these bent isolated valves, so I may even just come straight out of there. The thing is though, he wants it done all in copper. Uh, wants it all done in chrome. So that might just have to sit there. But to go from chrome, this is why I needed to get an isolation valve in here really, but we're not gonna have the depth. Unless they do a three quarter Let's do a three quarter. Uh, drop a comment below if you think you know what we can put onto that. A 22 mil, a three quarter thread. We've basically got, we've got, by the time we've connected into that, we're probably gonna have three inches. Three inches to get isolation fitting in. Uh, it's gonna be tight. Hmm. This is where, again, annoying a little bit that you've got to sort out prior to it all going in because it doesn't really want too much going on 
underneath there and because we want to come out the wall in chrome up I mean the only other way is going to be come out in chrome to sort of here and then up in copper I think that might be the way to do it to be fair now it's a case of measuring the centres of these so if we work out there we are from there we're going to work out that way that way and then it finds out exactly the centre there then we can just measure it from underneath mark it drill through and where we're going to drill through we'll put some little talon chrome covers in there as well just to cover the pipe work up i think right so what we've got we've got the tap this is put into position now we've got the tap in these are the things you need to overcome so obviously we've got that up there but you've got a fixed point then and then underneath here we're going to put a, an isolation valve but what i've just noticed is the hole that we've got here, if you can see, I've drilled out enough to get a pipe through and into the fitting. However, if ever we need to get these off for whatever reason, then that swivel's not going to pass through there. So I'm going to open up both of these two holes just so they're a little bit bigger in case in the future we need to get these swivels off. There we go. Much better look. Straight up straight in and then what we'll do we'll put the isolation valve underneath drill through this bit here drill through here maybe a little bit lower actually drill through there and then get the pipe work in and then the tiler can get this boarded tiled we just need to mark up the waste as well get those through boarded tiled and then they're ready to sort of push into position when it's all done and ready You know when you look at something, you've been doing something all day and it's just devoured hours and hours of your day and when you look you think, I haven't really done a lot but it's just planning it all out and this, that and the other. That is exactly what I want about. It's took ages to get that set right so we can now work from there. As I said, we can work the waste out through there. We've got the hot and colds coming through the bottom. We're just going to put on angled isolation valves like that but we can now work out exactly where the pipes are going to come through I can just mark there bring them out and then as I've said before this is the one for downstairs the one that's going here is a slightly different color but it meant we can set this up but at least that's done and we know as you seen earlier with the copper bath we know that that's all ready to go so tomorrow first thing you're going to do is come here put the Durgo on the air admittance valve on there onto the soil pipe so that'll be done Mark this up, connect the waste, bring the waste through, bring the pipe work through, get the pipe working. Oh, it's just a cold feed in for the toilet. And then we're going to pop and there's another bathroom to do over there. First fix that. So we'll drop onto that as well and get that one done. But yeah, it's just been one of them. They, they seem non-productive, but obviously they're very productive because we've got that in. And it just means the toilet can get on now. So, <sighs> right. It's a cold one in the barn this morning. You can see the Velux windows are all frozen up still. But let's have a look. Oh, it's not a bad view, is it? To be fair. Right, what we got today? We're going to get the point work in position for that basin. Get the cold feed poking out for the toilet, and then that leaves the uh, boards to go on there. And then basically Terry. The tiler come Monday, you can have this roof and get this completely tiled, and we can start installing that bath. That a few people on Instagram, I posted a picture of it on Instagram, and a few people were like, I wouldn't go anywhere near that, I wouldn't want to scratch it, damage it, anything like that. So it is like a what is it, like an Egyptian mummy packed away inside there, out of harm's way. So we'll get these little bits done. Uh, got the cold here, so I'm teeing into the cold, I'm going to come up in plastic and then come out through there in copper. 
the same with the heart. I'm going to come up in plastic, out with copper. The reason being, I want a bit of movement on these points when, the, when we come to fit um, this, this basin unit because I don't want them to be that rigid that I'm struggling to get stuff on. So I just want that little bit of movement. The tile is going to cut around that and then we're going to put some talon shrouds, chrome shrouds around it anyway. So you're not going to see, it's not going to be an issue. But I just want a little bit of movement on it. Then the cold's going to fo follow along here. I've marked out the base of where the, the pan is there to there. So we'll bring the cold in here again in copper. And then when that back to the wall pan goes in, we've got a little bit of movement on that pipe. So that is perfect. Exactly how I want it. Let's get some pipe working. A lot of people ask what, what plastic pipe I use. I use the um, the poly pipe only because I find it a lot more, you can move it around a lot better. I find that the, the John Guest and the Speed Fit stuff and it's just dead rigid. Whereas this is really flexible so you can get it in and around fairly easy. There now, coming up behind here, what I'll do is I'll mark through the hole roughly where, where are we going to go where can you see me roughly where the elbow is going to go poke out in copper and that'll be ready for the basin because remember we're going to come out the bottom there and connect on with bent isolation valves So that's the pipes in, plastic waste, inch and a quarter waste going in. Now, <laughs> I don't know whether it's me or not, or Dave at Plum Base, I asked for an inch and a quarter mechanical elbow, or at least I thought I asked for an inch and a quarter mechanical elbow, and that's what's turned up. So I'm gonna to have to switch that, because we've got to have the mechanical elbow on the back of there, because if I can find it, uh, oh yeah, here it is. Because we've got chrome going into the back there, and obviously you can't glue chrome, or at least I don't glue. I don't glue chrome. I'm sure someone will say they do. So an inch and a quarter mechanical elbow there, so that can poke out, and then we can trim that down to suits. So we'll shift across now. I say cold feeds here. As I said before, the width of the um, width of the pans there. So we. We'll Again, cut an elbow onto there, come off in copper, and once again with this, because the back of this is all covered by the close couple pan anyway, I'm going to poke the copper out there, but I'm going to leave it loose because I want to, I want to be able to shift it around when we come to fit the pan in and everything like that. It just makes life a hell of a lot easier. It's just about forward planning for those little things like leaving those loose and leaving that loose, just so you've got that little bit of movement where you're not going to see it, where the pan's in and covering it up. That's a perfect time to leave it loose so you can just get it exactly where you want it. Sorted. So, leave that there. I might just tack it down to there in a minute just so we can move it around a little bit because we can always expose it. So, that's the carcass now, the first fixed carcass internally. So, we're, we're set for the bath, that's not a problem. We're set for the basin bath, that elbow, and we're set for the toilet. And again, with the shower, the shower's all set. Once this is tiled, literally trimming off there because as I said in the previous video you've got that little bit of play there so that's this bathroom set everything's done toilet basin bath showers ready to go in as well so we'll leave it now Terry can come in uh, I think he's in Monday and come in get this completely tiled and then we can start fitting everything into position so hope you've enjoyed this just a little insight into how we prep a bathroom ready for things like that a bespoke bathroom anyway a lot a lot of the other bathrooms are just a vanity unit in dead easy but this is a little bit a little bit more involved i hope you've enjoyed that little insight into fitting this sort of bespoke style bathroom um i shall catch you next week hit the like button hit the subscribe button all that jazz thanks for watching catch you later